Okay, this is my Padini Exciter, and I've had quite a few people asking me how to make this. So I thought today I'd, I'd tidy it all up, put it onto a breadboard, find out everything about it, and then uh, make a how to make it video. So that's what I'll do today. So now uh, I've got it running away here, and uh, the setup I've got is the large pot bottle coil. Now you can use uh, the small coils which I've used in the, the recent videos on the Ferrite Slayer Exciter. They work really well with this. But uh, if you've got a large Slayer Exciter coil, uh, you know, just use that. Now, I've put it all onto a breadboard here, and I found out something really interesting today, which, which is it's basically working on the principle uh, of one of my very early circuits, which was the uh, trigger coil. Uh, I called it the simple sec, and it was basically two pans, and the feedback to the transistor came through the air from the uh, RF field from the output, and that's what's happening with this. Now, I've got the coil here, and that's the one thing I'm not going to show you how to make today because I've got no spare money to buy a wire to show you how to make that, otherwise I would. But it's very easy to make. It's just two rolls of 26 SWG uh, enamel copper wire, and you, roll, you, you wind them both at the same time onto a larger spool, and uh, that gives you a, uh, a big bifiler coil. And it's a one-to-one -one ratio, so you know the, the wires really have to be the same size. But if you've already got a big Bedini coil, and it's got, you know, the large the coil, the better really. Uh, try that first before you go buying wire. But uh, otherwise, if it doesn't work, you have to go for the uh, 26 gauge SWG. I don't know what the AWG equivalent is, but uh, tw do two rolls of 250 gram SWG. So uh, I'll just show you the plasma on this as well. It's uh, quite unbelievable really, because it doesn't burn. That's a piece of paper. And I'm, I'm holding that directly on the output. And it's not a mark on it. I mean, you can put your finger there as well. I can't stop doing experiments with this thing, sorry. But very strange. Okay, so on with the build. Okay, these are the components we need for the circuit. We need three jumper wires, a neon bulb, a 1K pot, a 4937 diode, a 4148 diode, a 100 ohm resistor, a 24K resistor, an MPSA06 transistor, four crocodile leads, and a small piece of bell wire as an aerial. And before I start the build, I just want to talk about this large coil here. This is uh, what I use for the Slayer Exciter, and it's uh, a pot bottle, and it's wound with 26 SWG wire from the bottom all the way up to the top. And this large coil here is known as the L1. This smaller coil at the base of the L1 is the L2 coil, and that's 18 SWG. It's about eight or nine turns. Okay, this is the circuit diagram we're going to be using today, and I'll upload uh, a link to this circuit diagram in the more information section. Uh, this large coil here, that's the one I've just showed you, and that's the small one at the base. L3 and L4, that's the Bedini coil, and the dots indicate the start of the windings. Uh, this diode here can actually be taken out, but I've left it in because it does change the frequency of the circuit. This diode here is actually blocking the return path, you see, to the top of this coil. So uh, that diode there is fairly redundant, but it does uh, alter the circuit characteristics, so I've left it in. This here is a piece of wire, and that's acting as a, uh, an aerial and uh, receiving a signal and sending it to the base here. So that's the circuit diagram. Uh, so I'll move that away. I will start a build here. I'll just pass the camera to my long suffering wife and uh, we'll get underway. Now, this is the 1K pot, so I'm going to put that across the central divide of the breadboard there, straddling it. So that's in position there. I'm going to take the 4148 diode and that is going to go with the, ca the, the black end, the cathode into the left hand leg of the 1k pot and then just put the other end of the diode into any free line of holes like that. Now I'm going to take the transistor and this is an MPSA06 and uh, in this configuration this first pin here is the collector base emitter and that's with the flat facing away from you. So I'm going to put that into a, a row of holes here 
and it's not lining up with anything else so it's just in three separate holes now I've sprayed the pins out slightly so there's a gap in between each pin there we go the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a neon bulb in and that's going to go across the collector and the emitter And then I'm going to take a 24K resistor and that's going to go from the base and I'm going to straddle this divide and put it into a row of holes up here. This is a 100 ohm resistor that's going to go on this side of the bedboard and that's going to go from the base to the center pin here of this pot. And the last thing I'm going to do here is this is the uh, 4937 diode and that is going to go from emitter to base and the cathode end is going to go at the base end so it's the black stripe to the base these are actually quite thick the legs on these diodes so they're hard to get into the breadboard i suppose everybody struggles with these kind of things not to worry So that's in there now. Now I'm going to take these three jumper wires. I'm going to put one up here at the start of this 24K resistor because that's going to be our positive. This green one here I'm going to put on the emitter, which is the very end leg of the transistor. And this other one here I'm going to put on the collector the transistor which is the very first leg of the transistor so hopefully that's nearly done now this is our Bedini coil and this is uh, one of the most important things to get this circuit working it's got to be a fairly big coil and really it's got to be a one-to-one -one ratio I've not tried any other ratios because I wind all my coils one-to-one -one. but uh, it's 26 SWG wire 500 grams in total it's made out of two rolls of 250 grams each and you just wind both wires on all uh, together now i'm going to find a start now that's the start of one of the windings and that goes to the positive and that's the other start of the windings and that is going to go To the anode of this diode here so that's the start of one winding to the anode and the start of the other winding to the positive I'm going to take the end of the wire which goes to the positive here and I'm going to put a jumper lead on that and I'm going to connect that to one side of this L2 coil on the large bottle. And I'm going to take another jumper wire and connect it to the other side of the L2 and connect that to the collector. Now, the end of this large L1 coil here is this wire here and that needs to go into the positive line here and now you need to put a, a crocodile leaf for the negative connection so that goes to the emitter the emitter of the transistor 
and I'll put that onto a negative of a battery. I'm using two 9 volt batteries here. And the positive goes to there, and that goes to the positive of the battery. And we've got one more wire to put in here, and that goes to the emitter. And this is from the coil. And it's fired up. Now this coil here is now making a noise. But we've got this thing here, which is the piece of wire, which is the aerial. This is the all important thing. Now I'm going to connect that to the end of this 100 ohm resistor here. I'm going to move that near to the large coil. And you can hear the plasma started. So it's all to do with this one piece of wire here. Acts as an aerial, like in my simple sec video, and that's what uh, is causing this uh, effect. But the secret is a one-to-one -one coil here, uh, a large L1 coil, and uh, this should get people going. Okay, thanks for watching.